Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit, up by the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. And now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into a holy city, or into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, commit suicide. Throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to them, I'm not going to commit suicide. It is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, on these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. All oh, y'all who got the devil talking, talk back to him. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for this time, this moment, that is an elevated moment in your presence. Father, my mind thinks in ways that it cannot think without you. I thank you for the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit that causes me to tread through scripture, bring forth truth and liberty to the lives of people. Father, whatever chains that have been holding your people down and holding them back, I decree and declare by the time that I am done, it will be broken. They will be released into the divine purpose and their identity because the truth of the word has come to them. God, open up every ear that every ear will hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church. I speak even now as I'm praying to the streamers that you would unlock something while they're sitting there at home that could not have been unlocked without truth. So we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen. Go ahead and take your seats in the presence of the Lord, and I'm going to walk through some scripture here. Um, there's something very important. It's so important that the devil has lost an attack on it. You blame slavery. I blame the devil for trying to remove fathers from our lives so that we would not know who we are. So you remove fathers, then there's going to be a struggle with identity. And a lot of people are committing crimes because they don't know who they are. A lot of people are aborting opportunities because they don't know who they are. Well, I want to bring something to you today, and I'm very bold at this because I am a son. And because I am a son, there's a certain level of boldness I speak in because I'm a son. I am not passive because I've been raised by our Father. I have the full backing of the Father God and the Holy Spirit to do what I do. I have enough uh, of, of physical manifestations of things because I obey that says to me I'm doing the right thing. Now, if I still had 23 people in, in almost 26 years, then I would question what I do and question what I hear. But since I have the results to go along with the activity and the teaching, then let's go begin to open ourselves up to see what more God wants to get to us. So as I read to you, I read about Jesus being tempted by the devil, led by the Holy Spirit, tempted by the devil. He's tempted by the devil because this is part of what you go through before you go up. So a lot of people don't want to go through the trial or the process. They just want to be elevated. Satan also took them or took him to a high place for temptation. Just because it wasn't God that elevated you, but it was something else that elevated you, the devil will elevate you just to tempt you. You know how some of y'all, that when you get elevated, you start acting funny. You weren't acting like that when your car was smoking and oil was running all across the driveway. 
You weren't acting like that when you were still living in the projects or living in some low-income housing. You weren't acting like that. But seem to be when we get up just a little bit, the tempter comes in. You remember when you didn't have a job. You remember when you didn't have any education. You remember that when you didn't have a husband and you didn't have a wife and you didn't have children. But sometimes when we get elevated, we start getting a little bit funny. It is to test what's on the inside of you. The tempter will come. The tempter will come. The tempter will come. Most people who come and meet me and then they come to either the church or my home, they don't realize when they meet me outside that I'm not going to display any level of success outside because humility says I'm nothing without God and everything that I have, God gave it to me. So how can I get exalted in my pride if God gave me all that I have? So I believe, and I'll talk about culture, because I am a black man married to a white woman, and she's a white woman married to a black man. She is not black. I am not white. We understand what we are, and we understand who he is. So I speak from the perspective of some things that have been going on racially with us that causes us to not reach the success that we should reach. So we see where the enemy has targeted sonship. Not only has he targeted sonship naturally, but sonship has been targeted spiritually. So my reset today is not like my reset on last Sunday. My reset today is reset sonship. I don't want to reset you so you get rich. Because if all you want is rich, you will never be wealthy. Rich lasts for your generation. Wealth lasts for several generations. I need you to get something that when you close your eyes, you're not worried about your grandbabies. That when you close your eyes for the last time, you know they're set up and nothing can stop them from generation to generation. So what I want to do is I want to help you here. Test your neighbor. Tell him he just want to help. He just wants to help. When you, when you fight in your leader, especially when it's a leader with integrity, it's because you cursed. Only cursed people fight good leadership. I ain't never seen a blessed person fight good leadership. Every person that God has in the Bible that he said it was blessing on, they did not fight leadership. Got quiet then. You notice that Jesus quoted the word back to the devil. You got to have enough word in you when you're traveling upward. That when the devil tempts you, you say, I almost said, say, <laughs> there's something else that I usually say sometimes. I'm not going to say, tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Ain't no need of you rolling your eyes. Ain't no need of you pointing your finger. You need some word in your heart to overthrow the plan of the devil. Yeah, you got a degree. But when Satan comes, are you going to use your degree or are you going to use the word of God? I just need to know. Because if you're going to use your degree, I'm going to make sure I don't let you too close around me because you're not going to be able to help me with your degree. You're going to have to have some word on the inside of you. So let, let's, let's talk. There's another statement that's made in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. I want to read over that. This is very important. See, people get nervous when you start talking about sonship, Sasha, because they want to do it on their own. And that's what Satan was trying to get Jesus to do. Operate on your own. And there are people who are listening to me that are operating on their own. Please don't get in trouble. Please don't have a bad day. Please don't miss a paycheck. Now, stay with me. Matthew 3, verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. There's a portion of your Bible that says, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, this is not what he said to Jesus. When Jesus came up out of the waters of the Jordan, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is not my beloved president, vice president, mayor, governor, senator. No, this is my beloved son. He, had, he didn't even say apostle. He didn't say pastor. 
He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Wonder why he didn't give him a title. So Satan takes him to a high place to tempt him. So your elevated place can be a temptation to see what your character is. If you change that drastically when you accomplish something, I don't think he's going to keep pushing you up. Satan will keep pushing you up until you destroy yourself. Jesus knows that he has a special status with God and relationship with him. The devil suggests that sonship is a privilege to be exploited. Now, the devil is not going to necessarily attack your elder's title. He is not going to attack your deacon or your minister's title. He is not going to attack your status in the workplace. He's not going to attack your status at home, what he is going to attack is your sonship because that can be ex- exploited because that's more important. Okay, stay with me. I want to just teach you something. If he exploits that area, I know it's going to be difficult for us to find our true identity. That Jesus should use his opportunities to see to his own need. To see to his own need. Now, Jesus, you're hungry. You've been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. I know that you're hungry. Now, satisfy yourself. Use your ability for you and not them. I constantly ask myself, if not every day, why am I doing what I do? If I am doing it for me, I am using my opportunity to help advance myself, which means I'm meeting my own need. You want to know why y'all are afraid to submit? Because you're afraid that somebody is going to meet their own need instead of consider yours. The test was, satisfy yourself. I can always tell when people are selfish. They come to church with an attitude. Something they wanted, they didn't get. And it's all about them, which means they just missed him. And you're talking about, oh, wasn't the service great? And they said, well, it was okay. It was okay because they never could get their mind off of themselves. You will never be able to discern a move of God when all you think about is yourself. Stay with me. Stay with me. A little bit difficult, but we're going to be okay. The positions or status of a son is never to be self-serving. Position on the status of a son is never to be self-serving. I elaborated just a little bit earlier this morning. It's quiet in here. Good, you're listening. Uh, that I all that I have, I didn't use a lot of work to get it. Most of my work was to maintain my status as a son and serve my father well. That was the agenda. And all this other stuff started coming. And the church was growing. I, I, I could do three services, but I didn't want to do three services. So God brought this building available so that I didn't have to do three services. Because I'd packed two services all out. So I was going to need some expansion. So it was so easy getting into this building. The church that was here, they purchased our old building. So we were able to purchase this building. The deal, the deal worked out so easy, it scared me. Because I didn't feel like I was adequate enough to pasture something this size. And the bills were much higher here than they were there. But I served a good father. 
Oh, yes, I did. I served a good father. So, so the decision then to follow God brought us into a debt-free building now. Isn't God good? That's, that's why I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get you to the place where the Father God will bless your socks off like Lady Davis says. Now, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. The status or the position or the status of a son is never to be self-serving. Now, Apostle Acklin, you know finances like I know finances. So, there's no way I can put all the finances in my own house and this house be blessed. Would you, would you not agree? So if, if the finances, and, and at the end of the day, I determine where finances are going to go, okay? So if I am into myself, I, I'm not faking what I'm driving and they're, they're paid for. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to try to appease someone by going and getting in more debt to satisfy something in me. That's why each day I have to tell myself while everybody else wants to be like the Joneses, I said, I'm going to stay right here in my Escalade. It rides better and you can put new wheels on it and keep up maintenance on it because you don't have the note on it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay right here because I have nothing to prove to anyone while I'm in sonship. Yeah. I, I told them my suits fit like uh, they're tailor-made because I go to the gym. If I didn't go to the gym, they wouldn't fit like this. So I make the muscles fit the suit. that suffers attack is the area of importance. Okay. Where did the tempter target? If you are the son of God. He attacks his sonship. If sonship were not important, Satan would not have attacked the sonship. I told him earlier, Satan is not omnipresent. You say he's in your house. They say he's in their house. They say he's across the country. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. So somebody's warring with the devil. Somebody's just got some bad decisions that they're making. So we need to find out. Are you wrestling with the devil or are you wrestling with some bad decisions trying to drive something that you can't pay for? Okay. 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 Are y'all still with me? Okay. So we, we know that this is an area of importance because the tempter, Satan, targets this area. So if we think about society, especially in the African-American community, there's a, there's a lack of fathers. Okay? There's a shortage of fathers. So if there's a shortage of fathers, then there's a shortage of sons. Because in order to be a father, you have to first be a son. Or you're going to be a baby's daddy. So this epidemic in our communities is because we have not many fathers. Okay. So if I want to bring down a race, I am going to remove fathers. I am going to remove sons. The devil's more strategic than the analyst in our church. 
Okay. Are y'all still with me? Okay. So he attacks this certain area. I elaborated on this in first service as well. Everybody's talking about the devil's trying to destroy them. Well, biblically, the devil attacks the head. Smite the shepherd. Scatter the flock. I asked him, how many of you were the 10 refresh if I wasn't here? You know how funny y'all get when y'all know I'm not going to be here? So if, if it's that kind of impact, when you know I'm not going to be here, just think about if I wasn't here ever again. So you smite the shepherd, try to kill the influence of the shepherd, remove the father, and everything else takes care of itself. All right. Sonship experiences this first assault because of the power that it carries. If darkness, the devil, Satan, wants to hinder us, he first has to remove the spirit of sonship. So he, he targets that area. That is the first area that's going to be assaulted. He is not after your money. He's after your identity. You get your identity, you automatically can get money. So he is after your sonship. I don't want, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. He's after your sonship. Uh, I just don't feel like it's the right thing to be accountable because last time I was accountable, this happened and that happened. Well, I can't help it if you got under a predator. There's a difference between a predator and a father. So there, there's an assault. If you be the son of Use your power to gain for yourself. You never want to sit under whether it's a pastor or a CEO of a major corporation. You never want to sit under anybody that's self-serving. Okay. Can we go just a little bit further? The pursuit of titles and positions have deceived believers and depleted them of the power that lies in sonship. I'm a deacon, but I can't deek. I'm an elder. I have no wisdom. Elders are supposed to be the wisest people under the senior leadership of the church. But if all I have is a position and a title without sonship, I have the title and I discredit the title because I'm not a son. So people are against titles in churches right now because the proper process is to go through sonship. There are things that you learn while you're growing. I believe God was very intentional because he could have created Adam, another Adam, at 30 years old. Jesus came on the scene and started working miracles at 30 years old. He achieved his leadership role at 30 years old. Why did God go back and get a baby to raise him up, to bring him under the stewardship of a physical father? Adam, Adam did not have a physical father. He only had God. God says, this mess is not going to happen again. So I'm going to have a carpenter to raise you. You're going to know that you're God's son, but you're going to learn a trade. So I know Jesus didn't fall back on his trade because he was doing ministry. So Jesus didn't even have 
the potential of being a drug dealer. Jesus is connected to the Father. He understands that. He knows the trade. So Jesus was not the only reason he went to jail is because he was the son. He didn't go to jail because he committed a crime. He was arrested because he was his son. He kept talking about his daddy in front of people who didn't know his daddy. Called the church. Isn't this something? Jesus keeps talking about his father in front of the people at church. And they think he has a devil because he's talking about his father. Because they can't relate to his father. So they can't relate to him. Because we are raised a bunch of people in church and not sons and not daughters. Okay. Because see, listen, let me tell you where you came from. You came from the community. Which means you came out of some household. So any mess that we, I used the term mess, confusion that we experience in, in the church, guess where it came from? Out of your house. And you keep talking about the church is messy. The church is not messy. Your household is messy. Because we got you from somewhere. You came from some address today. The church was fine until you got here. So where did the mess come from? Because this building had no problems. Until the community came. And the community is not bad until you come out of your house. And the educational system is not challenged until your child that came out of your house goes to that school. So you said the educational system doesn't work. The educational system works. It's just that child that you are not disciplined in your household that's challenged the educational system. Refresh is a great church until you come in here. See, that's how deceitful the devil is. Tries to turn something good into something bad. The bad stuff woke up with you this morning. You possibly fed it before you came to church at 11 o'clock. But when we get sonship, we understand that we need to get our house in order. If you keep letting them do whatever they want to do because you want to do whatever you want to do, but you bumping up against authority when you come in refresh. And I know you don't like it sometimes, but there's a daddy in this house. So you're, you're thinking because you don't understand sonship, which is also daughters. You don't understand you're breeding something down the hall from you that's going to try to overthrow you. Okay. okay. I'm getting a little bit deep here. I'm getting a little bit too passionate. So what we have to do is we have to educate you. We have to educate you so you'll know what the real problem is. So let's take it a little bit deeper. Since we're now in your house, we're in your house. Every action is based on a way of thinking. Now that we're in your house, let's get in your head. Whatever's in your head is creating confusion in that house. And then when whatever's in your head catches a ride with you and comes out of that house, it creates more confusion on the job. 
more confusion in the schools and in the communities. So if we can teach you about your head, get you thinking differently, your house will run smoothly. Which means that if your house is running smooth, your schools will become better. The church will take over. Sonship is the superior position with God and should be in the church. Hell understands it. Hell understands that sonship is the superior position with God. If I can just, if I can just get around apostle, if I can just get close to him, close is not going to work. It's what's in my head. That's what I'm trying to transfer so I don't work against myself. So I don't work against people who are trying to come up. They said the crab mentality. I don't want to pull somebody down that's got an opportunity to go up. I don't want to criticize somebody that's not guilty. I'm going to say that again. I don't want to criticize somebody that's not guilty. All black people are not guilty. I may look like him, but I wasn't there. I didn't commit that crime. I may even sound like him, but I don't have that DNA. I got a heart for people. I would not ever do anything that crazy like that. Don't categorize me with that type of happening. You know how we have a tendency. Lady Davis, you don't know. But we have a tendency... We have a tendency in our community to hate what sounds like what offended us. You, you just, you just seem so much like them. So I'm not going to have anything to do with you. I'm not going to speak to you. I'm going to roll my eyes at you. I don't even know you. You just, you just remind me. You, you need a reset. <laughs> If I remind you of something bad and I'm good, then you need to reset. Because if you don't have any evidence or any bad thing that I've done, but I just remind you, just the tone of my voice. I, I wouldn't have a voice if, if the father hadn't showed up. And guess what? You don't have to silence me. He will if he doesn't like what I'm doing. Because he's the father. The only reason you think that I can't be silenced by the Father is nobody can silence you. Okay. Okay. Are, are y'all okay? I'm gonna do whatever I want to do. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. Do you know how hard I worked to get here? That's what Satan was trying to get Jesus to do. Go ahead and work your stuff so you'll lose your mind. All this happened and God just gave it to me. I always minister from the outside. I watch me minister. I'm sitting over there in my seat watching me minister right now. So I don't lose my mind thinking I've done it all. Once the anointing lift, the ability to articulate and bring truth also lifts. <sighs> Y'all still with me? So if we start pursuing, I, I want to be this. That's what I want to be. Do you know what that costs? They, when, when they consecrated me a bishop back in 2015, uh, Bishop Garns kept saying, uh, first the pageantry and then the crucifix. We were coming out of the fellowship hall, walking down the hallway, and he kept saying that I didn't know what he was talking about. I do now. The elevation brought the attack. The same people that hosannaed me tried to crucify me. So those plaques you see on both sides of the hallway are to remind me, you better stay with the Father 
it ain't for you to know my accolades. It is to remind me, if you don't have the Father with you, you're going to be in some major trouble because the same ones that signed off on some of them with you may be against you. Let, let, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. You, you don't know the importance of sonship. Because fathers always show up wherever they see a son. You want to be protected? Become a son. Fathers from everywhere will come to support you because you're a son. It's not my brothers that covered me. It was fathers that looked out for me. Because they, they saw a son. They sensed a son. And whenever a son is in trouble, a father physically and spiritually will come through for a son. Listen, you don't have to be perfect. Just remain a son and watch the father show up. There was one that was called a prodigal son that got all of his livelihood and went out and spent everything he had on prostitutes. I don't know how long it took him to spend it, but he took everything that was coming to him. But when he changed his mind, got a reset, now he's walking back towards the father and the father gets a robe and a ring and runs to him to cover him up and put a ring on his finger that signify he belongs to me. got a problem with that because you have private issues and they have public issues. Jesus and the apostles had power over Satan and situations because of sonship. The reason they had power, Jesus and the apostles, is because of sonship. Jesus taught the disciples how to be sons. This is how you do it. That's what it, it, this is how you do it. So whenever you see someone doing something opposite of what you have taught them, either someone has been in their ear or they're not the DNA. He said, make disciples. In all nations. Create sons in all nations. I cast out devils. You cast out devils. And we don't have to have an altar call to cast out a devil. When real sons come show up, all kind of demonic activity starts getting nervous. And Jesus just said, come out. So we're, we're in a place now that we're not going to do anything that makes you nervous. I don't think. But, but it's, it's all this that was being taught so that when Jesus, what Jesus had sown into them for three and a half years was working when he left. The worst thing that can happen is to leave your legacy to somebody who is not a son. But I think I'm next. Have you learned how we do it? There's things that are shared with sons that's not shared with the public audience. I've learned that through being a son, there were things that are shared and th still things that are being shared that's not shared with the audience. I, uh, last, last week, may have been, what day was that? Friday or Saturday? Lady Darling, Bishop Tudor Bismarck, text. He'll be here April the 23rd. <laughs> April 23rd, he's, he's going to be here. But I respect him as a father. So he doesn't mind picking up the phone, texting me. He said, I, I'm in the country. Do you want me to come see you? Yes, I want you to come see me. You are a benefit to me because you are a father. I text Bishop Jakes this morning. He texts me back. And he spoke a blessing over me this morning. This morning. This morning. They respond to sons. You want a response from a father, become a son. That's why the devil attacks, because he doesn't want you to have wisdom. Those fathers have wisdom. I wouldn't have Edmund and Marlene here if I didn't reverence her father as a father. 
He trusts me to take care of his children as a son. And I will not disappoint him. <laughs> Stay with me here. Stay with me here. So sonship is the superior position. So I don't want to be anything else but the son. I had no intentions of being a bishop. I had no intentions of being an apostle. I had every intention of being a son. I was, listen, before I got those titles, I was powerful. I am still powerful. The devil was scared of me. Why? Because I was a son. The devil's always afraid when sons show up. Let me diverse just a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Um, all of y'all that the messy people come to. The reason they come to you is because they don't sense sonship. The only reason they're talking to you is because they don't sense you're an heir. Yeah, this one's saying this and this one's saying that. You know why you're getting all that information? Because there is no way that anyone will come and talk to me about my daddy. Or the house of worship that I worship in. Okay, plain and simple. Father and son relationship is God's way of transferring wisdom and wealth to the next generation. Throughout your Bible, for God to transfer wisdom and wealth, there was a father-son relationship. Say, for instance, if you eliminate the relationship of a father, so you have now canceled out the wisdom for that next generation. So now he or she has to go through trial and error, which the father already knows. I've had people to tell me, fathers told me, watch for this. Be careful about this. They told me that so that I am now informed. So certain things I can deviate from before they cost me more than I want to pay. So he is now transferring. The, the worst thing that can ha happen to you is you only have the level of wisdom that you've achieved in your lifetime. I'm going to say that again. The worst thing that can happen to you is all the wisdom that you have is your 30 years, your 40 years, your 50 years, your 60 years, your 70 years. Some of us, your 80 years. You are at a default in this season because you need to see things change. Let me tell you why young people are giving up because they don't have fathers to tell them the seasons change. What you seeing now, we saw then. Sasha told me, don't get rid of all your old suits. They're coming back. It cycles around, but if you have not been here long enough to experience a cycle, nor do you have a relationship with someone who has experienced a cycle, you will miss your opportunity. So God, God transfers wisdom, okay? When it was 10 degrees, I thought it wouldn't go ever warm up again. It was so cold, I thought that it would never warm up again. But based on experience, we're in 70 degree weather. What if I would have given up? While it was 10 degrees. What if you give up just because the money is not funny, it's just low? What if you give up when you go through that season in your marriage where she can't stand you and you can't stand her? Can you keep working through the difficult times? 
Because when you have people who are experienced, they can say, I had that same experience and it passed over after a certain period of time. You will not know about things that are passing over until you get in contact with somebody who has had that experience. You can't help me if you're not older than me. So you, 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 he's transferring wisdom. He's transferring wealth. And I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Y'all know how that goes. All, and I think about it. I'm really thinking seriously about this. All that we've gained. Not that we have, we, we have insurance that Sasha will benefit, but if she doesn't catch our mind, whatever the insurance payoff is, it's going to be gone in a certain period of time. Have you prepared your child to handle your assets after you're gone? Because if you can see how they're thinking now, some it may take a year, some it's going to take a day. Only riches are for one generation. Wealth is a generational term. Wealth doesn't leave when a event takes place in life that is not favorable. Wealth is still intact when you don't get your tax return. In our community, they can't wait to get that tax money. I don't know how many children they got on there, but half of them not theirs. But when we get that tax money, we are at church until we get our tax return. because we have not been taught correctly. And I'm glad it's, it's just at a certain amount that the IRS will give you a, a visit. Because those other five kids other than the two you have that you got that social security number. That's why we have to have somebody with some wisdom. Because the Bible says, your sins will find you out. You need to get around a father that was found out by their sins and then recovered and didn't do it again. My last one, my last one, my last one, my last one, and I'm going to let you go. My last one. Without the father, there is no one to make the transfer. Without the son, there is no one to receive the transfer. Most of your lives, those of you who are doing okay, you built it on your own. It wasn't because a father transferred to you. So you're a person who has built a generation of what we call E. If you don't have a son or daughter coming after you, when you die, it's over. The state will take over. Some of y'all don't want to die so you don't have a will. There has to be a father transferring. There has to be a son, a recipient of what's being transferred. That's how God works. If you eliminate the father, the son is ignorant. If you eliminate the son, the father takes his riches to the grave. Scripture for those of you who know scripture. Elijah had an anointing that he transferred a double portion to Elisha. The transfer was made. Now Elisha is trying to find a son. And he winds up with a servant 
named Gehazi, which hindered the transfer. So now the anointing that was in double portion is in the grave. So when you throw a dead man in the tomb, he rolls over on the skeleton of Elisha. And the Bible says he was resurrected. So the anointing that's supposed to be present because we don't have our proper sons, we don't have the anointing to help us in a pandemic. So we're limited as a people because the anointing is in the tomb. And I've heard great fathers and mothers, they're saying, what are we going to do when the Bishop Jakes and the Joyce Myers and all those are gone? Because they can't find sons to transfer the anointing to. And if they don't transform the anointing, we all going to be crazy. Because it takes an anointing to keep your mind. It takes an anointing to keep your assets. It takes an anointing to keep you alive. It takes an anointing to keep your marriage together. It takes an anointing to raise your children. It takes an anointing to operate in a political position. It takes an anointing to work in health care. It takes an anointing to work for the government. It takes an anointing to live in society. And you're wondering why your, your kids are eating gummies because there is not enough anointing in the earth. You're afraid for them to go to school wondering what they're going to get into because there should be an anointing in the school. Where is the anointing? The anointing is in the tomb. But I came to speak for Refresh Family Church, Refresh Nation. We're going to get the anointing back. We're going to raise up sons and daughters. We're going to raise up those who understand what fathers are. We're going to raise them up. And we're going to dispatch it into the community. And we're going to say to the community, the crime rate has to drop. Suicide has to drop. Chaos has to drop. Every demon force over the region has to pack its bags and leave our community. Leave your household. Leave your marriage. Leave your children. You are anointed. Somebody shout in this house. You're going home and get your children back. Every wayward child, every confused child, you're going home and you're going to lay your stake down and say, I want my children and I want them now. We didn't come to take sides. We are sons and daughters and we are anointed. We are powerful, say it with me. We are powerful. We are wise. We are sent by the Father. No weapon formed against us as sons and daughters shall be able to prosper. Shout one more time. Slap your neighbor high fry, tell him I'm a son, I'm a son, I'm a son. Females too, you're not, there's nothing wrong with your agenda. God sees you as Jesus Christ in the earth. You look just like his son, Jesus Christ. You sound like Jesus. You are anointed like Jesus. You may, you bring change like Jesus. You shake nations like Jesus. You reproduce like Jesus. You rise up from the dead. I feel a resurrection in this house. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. You're the seed to your community. You're in that community to change that community.
your another neighbor, tell him I'm a son. Those of you who are inferior about saying son, just say I'm a daughter. Say I'm a daughter. Say I'm a son. Say I'm a daughter. The devil's getting afraid right now. You want to know why he's afraid? You got your reset today. You didn't come to take sides. You came to take over. You affect every atmosphere. When you go to work, you affect the atmosphere. When you go home, you affect the atmosphere. Wherever you go, you affect the atmosphere. You. I don't know what you had to fight through to get here today. I don't know what you've been through while you're streaming. But if you went through hell trying to get here and you've been through a whole lot this morning, I need you to shout right there.